All right, so this Knife Thoughts video, as you can see, is a little different than most of my videos in that I'm in front of the camera here, and rather than focusing on a particular knife or brand, uh, I'm gonna focus on my experience going to Smoky Mountain Knife Works here this past weekend. And I was able to go to Smoky Mountain Knife Works because uh, my wife and I had planned a trip, a quick kind of like long weekend trip to Great Smoky Mountain National Park for my birthday. And for whatever reason, I just kind of never put two and two together that uh, Smoky Mountain Knife Works was very nearby until literally like a day before we were leaving. Um, so I'm glad that I did because I probably would have felt pretty, pretty silly uh, and uh, missed out if I hadn't realized it. Although you do drive past it, literally our route took us directly past us, past uh, Smoky Mountain Knife Works. So I probably would have realized at that point, but. I did realize that we'd be going past it, and since you know Smoky Mountain Knife Works has the claim that they're the the world's largest knife showroom, and um, I certainly haven't seen a larger one, uh, I decided it would make a lot of sense f to stop. Um, and so we kind of worked it into the plans. It worked really well, actually. We went on a um, you know a couple hikes on. Uh, on Saturday and then you know we're pretty tired so we had some time to stop at Smoky Mountain Knife Works and um, so that first day that we went I, I had a list of knives that I wanted to look at knives I've been interested in um, you know that I wanted to see what they were like in person and I just wanted to kind of look around also because I posted on the Smoky Mountain Knife Works Army Facebook group which if you're a fan of Smoky Mountain Knife Works and really kind of knives in general, but especially if you ever buy from Smoky Mountain Knife Works, um, that would be a good Facebook group to join. I posted in there uh, before leaving for the trip and um, you know, said how excited I was and you know, kind of asked for some recommendations on what I should look at, you know, how long I should plan for to, to you know, be at Smoky Mountain Knife Works and stuff like that. And pretty much everybody uh, suggested that it, you know, it's gonna take a while to, to look through it all, uh, could take a whole day. Um, and that just like, like I said, it was a, just a couple day trip. Um, so that, that I knew I wasn't gonna be able to dedicate that much time, but I, I think we got there a couple hours before they were closing. Um, and I stayed for a little over an hour or something like that the first time. Uh, but I had knives that I wanted to, to look at and I had, you know, some, I just wanted to look around. And so uh, I think the first, counter that I went to actually was the Boker counter. Um, and the reason for that is because uh, there's two knives from Boker that I have been interested in. And the first is the Boker Urban Trapper Gentleman. Uh, and the reason I was interested in that one is I really like the design. It's a nice kind of like classic curved design, very slender, uh, looked like it would be easy to carry and looked pretty good, somewhat traditional with the wood handles and, um, you know, kind of classic lines. Uh, I really wanted to like it. It's like $95, something like that. Most places it was $95 there. And um, I, I looked at, at the one that was the display one and it just really didn't flip as well as I, um, you know, was hoping. Uh, not as well as the Urban Trapper that my brother has uh, that's the normal version. And um, it also had some lock sticks. So I decided not to, to get that one. Uh, and then I also wanted to look at some of the Boker traditionals, the, the German made Boker traditionals. And the reason for that is because a lot of people have suggested those to me. So I'm a big fan of GEC, which you probably know if you follow the channel here. Um, and often people compare the quality of Boker's German made traditionals to GEC. And uh, I, I've heard a lot of good things about them. So I wanted to check them out. Um, I did check a few out and they looked really nice. They looked really well made, um, you know, very good transitions, fit and finish, um, nice action on the ones I saw, strong pulls and stuff like that. Uh, but the ones I was looking at were, were a little more expensive than GECs typically. And I know I saw a video with the owner or CEO or something of Boker uh, where he said that they're really getting hit hard with the um, uh, tariffs. So, you know, their, their knives cost more here in America than, than they wish they would. Uh, so I understand that, but they were like, the one I was looking at, the one I liked, ended up being, it didn't have a sticker on it actually. Uh, and then um, they looked it up or maybe another one nearby that was kind of the same thing was like $156. And um, even though it was a really nice knife, I just didn't really want to spend that much on it. 
uh, at that moment. Um, it wasn't really a handle material that I really loved. It was it was a micarta handle material. I was hoping for a bone um, or a wood, and uh, so yeah, I, I, there was nothing. There were no you know quality issues with it. Just was a little more expensive than I was wanting to pay. So I didn't get anything there. Um, then I went to Spyderco. Uh, Spyderco, they had a lot of knives uh, that I was interested in. Um, one in particular was the Yojumbo. Um, I like the look of the Yojumbo. Uh, I I don't really carry knives for self defense, but it looked like it would be a great like cardboard cutting knife. Um, and I do like Warncliffe or straight edge knives. Uh, but like some Spydercos, and in particular the. Andorra, um, it it had these finger scallops in a way that they, it didn't make sense for my hand. So on the Yojumbo, like on the Andorra here, the the finger scallops were, um, or particularly on the Andorra, this middle one, and I've actually sanded these down, but the the finger choils on the Yojumbo were were too big for, uh, or I'm sorry, too small. Or two fingers really like I could get two fingers in but it wasn't really comfortable and then just too big for, for one finger so that it didn't really make sense so unfortunately the ergonomics of it didn't really work very well for me uh, otherwise very cool knife um, I also checked out uh, the um, Ikuchi uh, uh, designed by um, Paul Alexander I believe who also designed the Aroboros which I have which was a gift from my, my wife uh, and really like, and I really like the design of the Akuchi, and I was really, really um, happy to see, I had seen one before they did the CQI, or constant quality improvement of dropping the tip of the blade down a little bit so that you couldn't catch your finger on it. I saw one where you could catch your finger on it and um, wasn't very happy with that. Uh, you know, I, I don't like proud tips, and sometimes modern knives can have proud tips. Um, so I, it was really great to see that they really solidly fixed that. Uh, and it flipped really, really well. I mean, really great flipping action. Um, so I, I actually almost got one of those. I actually was kind of planning to. And um, the, the downside to the Akuchi for me is that, uh, unlike the Aerobros, which I believe I have it right here. Um, so on the Aerobros and most other compression lock knives, uh, this cutout to, to access the compression lock and unlock it is, you know, like a, a semicircle, um, so it makes it real easy to get your finger in there. Let's see if I can get your finger in there and unlock it. On the Akuchi, it's not. On the Akuchi, it is like a rectangle or like half of a rectangle. So it has a straight line down, straight line across, straight line back up. And um, I suppose that that would work well if it was made a little bit bigger or if your fingers were a little smaller. I certainly have, you know, wide fingers. Um, but for me, it was a little tough to get in there. I really wish that they had, that Paul Alexander, or I believe that's his name, um, hadn't designed that that way. I really wish they had put either a bigger rectangular, you know, cutout for the, for the compression lock or, uh, just put the normal cutout. Um, so after Spyderco, I went and looked at there some Moras and stuff like some cold steel and stuff. Uh, but really one of the big things I was interested in was Rough Rider. I'm a big fan of Rough Rider. Uh, I know a lot of people have feelings about them being made in China, and I do understand that. I've got a video that I put out recently about some of my thoughts on that, not all of them. But um, I really wanted to see a lot of Rough Riders. In particular, the, in particular, they have a new series of knives without shields, which I like because I, I don't like glued shields, which all Rough Riders have glued shields. Um, in denim micarta, and uh, so I wanted to see those in particular, the Barlow. Uh, I also wanted to see the new Rough Rider Reserve knives. They have the, I believe it's the Triple R 005 and the Triple R 008 were out, the Hedgehog and the um, Common Stock. Uh, so I wanted to check those out. And then some of their modern knives, they have, uh, I've been really, really happy with Rough Riders modern knives, really great value. Uh, and they've got some interesting new ones. They have some in copper, uh, which I've seen a lot of praise for, and some in, and a new one in brass, uh, which is like a big Warren Cliff, as well as uh, some of their jumbo size modern knives. So I went and the first thing I did was after a little while, I got someone's attention at the counter and um, I asked them, and I think I was like, I said, I was wondering where your denim micarta 
and I didn't even get past that. Uh, the person interrupted me and said, we don't have those. And, and I said, oh, okay, I, I thought that you did. I, I um, you know, I checked ahead and they're like, they said, and I'm pretty sure this is a quote, if I say we don't have it, we don't have it. So, and not in the tone that I'm using, <laughs> um, in, in a pretty confrontational tone, enough that my wife, who is very much not a confrontational person, um, I, I'm not really a confrontational person, but she's even less so. Uh, she actually like walked away because she, later she said it was so cringy. Um, and it was just really weird. I mean, uh, it was just, you know, if, we, if I say we don't have it, we don't have it. And at that point I was just like kind of irritated and confused because um, I've gotten great customer service from Smoky Mountain Knifeworks every time I've called or messaged, um, really without fail, especially for Rough Rider knives. So uh, it was it was kind of I was taken aback. So I said, well, I, I did check beforehand. Um, you know, I messaged it, it's available online. Uh, and, you know, he said, okay, show me you're on your phone. So I said, okay, you know, I actually had it up already on my phone, uh, you know, one of my tabs because I had been looking at the knives that I wanted to, to check out in person. So I showed it and he said, well, sometimes it's, it's uh, online, but not here. And I had messaged and now he hadn't uh, kind of like, he didn't guarantee that they had it. But before I went, when I was on my, my post, I had asked if they would have those available still that weekend, as well as the Rough Rider Reserve uh, two models. Um, and Andy Armstrong, who kind of, I, I don't know exactly what his position is there, but he does certainly a lot of the PR and, you know, social media, and he designs some of the Rough Rider Reserve knives. Uh, he actually replied saying, yes, you know, we have a lot of them. They'll be available this weekend. So I was pretty sure that they were available. I mean, uh, you know, it's always possible that they weren't, but I was pretty sure. Um, so I said that, and I think at that point I probably sounded a little irritated too. Uh, but he said, well, you know, I don't know where they are or something like that. So I, I, I said, I'll just look for them myself. I didn't want to deal with the guy anymore. It was not the experience I was expecting to have considering my all of my previous experiences with Smoky Mountain Knife Works customer service. Uh, so I just started looking around the Rough Rider case myself. And, um, you know, there, there were a bunch of other knives that I wanted to see. Uh, and funnily enough, my wife had kind of wandered back over, I think. Um, and she found the Rough Rider denim micarta series. Uh, and uh, dumb enough, if I had just looked down before asking, asking the person, um, I might have seen them because they were feet away, uh, maybe a foot away on the bottom shelf uh, from where I had been talking to this person. So uh, I wish I had just looked a little harder myself, but um, they did have them. And at that point, the person's um, tone and kind of like demeanor changed completely. They were trying to be very, very helpful, very friendly, like buddy, buddy type thing. Uh, which honestly didn't even like, it didn't make me feel better. It, it almost made me feel worse because, you know, they didn't know that they didn't have them. They just, for whatever reason, didn't feel like helping me, I guess. Um, and uh, I completely get that that everybody can have a bad day. I have been very unfriendly at times, you know, when I'm having a bad day, obviously. Uh, I definitely don't expect the people at Smoky Mountain Knife Works to know where everything is. Uh, and I, you know, don't expect them to have the enthusiasm for knives that someone like me, you know, has. But I do kind of expect them to be friendly, you know, to, to try to be helpful rather than to be like clearly confrontational. Uh, so it did kind of, um, I guess, paint a uh, different mood or something on the rest of the experience. I did look at a few Rough Rider knives, but I didn't really feel like dealing with that person very much. Uh, so I didn't look at the knives as, as much as I would have. I didn't look at as many knives as I would have. Um, and I didn't look at the particular models as closely as I would have. So it was a little, little bit of a, uh, you know, a deflating experience, I guess is how I would describe it. Um, I did look around, you know, like I say, at some more Rough Riders, but I kind of moved on a lot quicker than I, I think I would have. And um, I looked at some other things. I looked at uh, some of the Civivi, Wii, Kaiser. They actually kind of had all of those along with Artisan and CJRB, I think it is, in one kind of area. Um, 
boy, I was impressed with all of those knives. I, I didn't really see one that wasn't really nicely made. Um, so it's, it's one of those things where, you know, again, I know people have, you know, feelings about things being made in China, but they're making nice knives. I mean, they have a lot of knives that I want to get. Um, and, uh, you know, in particular, the Gobi from CJRB, really cool design. Um, the new OSS dagger from Wii Knives. Um, they didn't have it, I don't think it's out yet, the, but the Wii Esprit, I think is how you pronounce it, uh, from Ray Laconico. Um, the uh, Civivi Fracture is one. People have been asking me to do uh, reviews on more modern slip joints, and uh, I'm probably going to do one. I didn't get it then because I just... I don't know. I, I, it was after that experience and I didn't really feel like buying anything after that, to be honest. So uh, probably Smoky Mountain Knife Works would want to know about that uh, because I didn't feel like buying anything. Um, but uh, I didn't get it, but I probably will get a Civivi Fracture. Uh, the Wii Appalachian Drifter was really, really nice. Um, I had one of the Isham Black Stars, uh, Elijah, I believe it is, Isham Black Star, which is a, a detent um, a slip joint detent flipper and the the the, the not Civivi uh, Wii Appalachian Drifter in my opinion from my memory had bet much better uh, action it was really really snappy flipping um, so I would kind of like to get one of those also um, some of their newer models look really cool their fixed blades uh, Civivi's fixed blade was nice um, and then uh, from another one was Honey Badger. I saw a knife from Honey Badger because my cousin has one. It was nice. Um, it was a little more expensive than I expected it would be, but uh, it was nice. And then I checked out the K-Bar Dozier, which I've been meaning to get one of those for a long, long time, the K-Bar Dozier Folding Hunter. Um, didn't get one again, kind of, I think, because of that experience, uh, but it was nice. I, I should get one just because it's a classic. Uh, I did check out some um, uh, Hogs. I checked out the Hogue Micro Flip, which I had seen at a uh, gun show a ways back. Um, liked it, didn't get it. <laughs> um, I checked out the Hogue X03. Wasn't a huge, huge fan of the design on that one. Checked out another Hogue that looked really cool. Wasn't as expensive as I expected, but the handle was a little small for me. So saw a lot of knives, um, you know, one that I wanted to see that they were out of was the Spyderco Amalgam. Um, <clears throat> and then I also did get to check out some of the displays. So they have a really, really cool uh, historical display in the top part. Um, so they have old catalogs of knives. They have some old kind of trademarks. They have old knives themselves. Uh, and then, so just a bunch of cool stuff. Um, really, really interesting historical stuff that I that I kind of, you know, wish I could have taken a lot more time on. But one thing that I really wish I could see more of was they had a bookcase that had a whole bunch of old books showing patterns. Um, and I would love to see that those books with the, with the different patterns, you know, described and shown and different brands and such. Uh, that would be a really cool thing to be able to see those. But of course they were locked up, you know, older books. Can't have people just flipping through them. Um, so yeah, that was pretty much the, the experience um, my first time. Sorry about that, I had a notification come up, but the first time going on Saturday. After that, I did post on the Smoky Mountain Knife Works Army um, Facebook group about my negative experience as well as the positives. I decided to take that down because I felt like it might be better as feedback directly to Smoky Mountain Knife Works. Um, and actually Andy Armstrong again commented on it saying that you know it's something they'd probably wanna hear. Uh, I messaged them after I took it down. I, I took it down, I think the next morning and, um, and messaged them the next morning. And I actually haven't heard back, which was a surprise to me. Um, I've messaged them before about other things uh, <clears throat> and always heard back relatively quickly. So I'm not sure why I haven't heard back on that, uh, but who knows. Um, so that was my, my experience the first day. Now on the way back, which was a couple days later on Monday, um, we stopped again and we didn't have a whole lot of time just because, you know, we had to get back and get ready for the week and back to normal life and stuff. But um, I did want to stop again uh, because I, I, I wanted to see some more of the Rough Riders. Uh, so we stopped again and I was there for about 45 minutes, something like that. I did look at more Rough Riders um, and, uh, and ended up getting some. Uh, I had gotten some the previous day uh, and looked around a little bit more, looked at some 
um, you know, other brands and things like that, some Victorinox case, stuff like that. But um, there is a huge amount of knives. You really need a lot of time to see it if you're into knives. But uh, the other things I got, and I'm going to show you now what I actually got. So it's probably what you were waiting for. I don't know if anybody will watch this point, but I got this hat. Um, I had wanted to get a shirt. That's actually part of the reason I went back or wanted to go back for a second day. I wanted to get a shirt just as kind of like a memento of the trip. Um, and they didn't have any that I really liked. I mean, they have had, you know, several different Smoky Mountain Knife Works shirts, but they were all the type where it's like um, a very uh, recognizable logo or style of logo, but changed to be Smoky Mountain Knife Works. And those are cool. There's nothing wrong with those, but it wasn't really what I was looking for. I was something just looking for something just Smoky Mountain Knife Works. The closest thing they had was an, uh, uh, SMKW Army hashtag shirt. And, you know, nothing wrong with that, but it was gray. I'm not super into gray shirts. I've got a whole bunch from my normal work. Um, so I ended up getting this hat. It wasn't too expensive. Um, I have more hats than I need for sure, but I do like hats, uh, even though I don't, don't wear them all the time. But I like this. You know, it's gray. It's like a trucker style. Um, has the kind of mesh back here in orange, orange uh, stitching orange front and then the orange um, embroidery. It's nice and soft. I don't like trucker caps or hats that are the hard front. Um, so I like that. Uh, another thing I got, I got a few of these. These are um, fine, it said ceramic. I don't know if they're really ceramic, but um, I guess they probably are, but fine sharpening stones. These were inexpensive. Um, and I got them mostly kind of like as to, to give to people who are like knife thought supporters or whatever, um, because it says Smoky Mountain Knife Works and has the phone number and everything. So a little bit of a cool kind of like thing to, to give to people. Um, I got some of those on the first day. Another thing I got on the first day, I got the hat on the second day. Uh, so I'd gone back to um, get a shirt. Another thing I got on the first day is the Rough Rider what is this, RR2257 Bow Trapper in red micarta. Um, so they did these previously in black micarta with red liners. This is red micarta with black liners. I got one of them, really, really liked it. Um, my uh, mom actually really liked it and her birthday or Mother's Day or Christmas or something like that, I guess it was probably Christmas, was, was coming up and she wanted it. Uh, so I gave it to her they, because they had already sold out so I couldn't get another one. Um, so I'm glad that they, they did this pattern again. And actually Andy Armstrong did say online that it's gonna be a regular pattern, not like a, a limited run or anything like that. So they'll probably be doing more of these. Um, really cool designs, like a saddle trapper, you might say. Uh, fits really well in the hand. Um, the blade's not the thinnest ground blade out there for sure. It's actually pretty thick to be honest, um, behind the edge, but it's a cool little knife. Uh, I carried it some on the second day of hiking and used it and such. Uh, so cool, cool little knife. Got that. Um, not, not expensive. $14, I think something like that. Uh, another thing actually that my wife, uh, found, uh, she saw it right on the way in, I guess is this knife. Um, when we go to national parks, I try to get one of these Victorinox classics that they did in the um, Ranger of the Lost Art National Park WPA poster series. Um, so I don't think for all of the national parks, but for many of the national parks, there were these WPA posters made with very nice art. I don't know how I, you can see that there, but and this is the one for the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. So I have one for um, Acadia because uh, we went to Acadia for our honeymoon, possibly some others, but I'm not 100%, I'm forgetting right now, it's bad. But um, uh, I try to get them when, when I go. I uh, definitely have one for Acadia. And now uh, for this one, um, I don't think I found any when we went to uh, uh, Petrified Wood or Petrified Logs, I guess it is. and. Um, the Grand Canyon and um, Saguaro. But anyway, that was a cool find. Um, another thing I got on the first day is the Denim Micarta. Figured I might as well get one since it caused such a hollow blue. Comes in the, the classic um, uh, Rough Rider box. It's like a magnetic box. It is the RR2191. I don't know if you can see that there, but 
Um, actually, after I got home and looked at these knives closer, I didn't really look at them while I was there. Um, I realized that this knife does does have an, a weird issue. Um, now, it's really cool looking. I really like this denim micarta. Um, it has this R, and I don't know if it's a line or an I or what it is, bolster. I wish that they would do the bolster like on the sous chef that has two R's back to back. Um, that would be a lot better looking, but the denim micarta is very nice. It has pinch bolsters, no shield, which I love. Um, and it does have T10 carbon steel. So a lot of people really like that. It has a pen blade in front and then a clip point. Now it is a little hard to get at that clip point, um, but that's not really the issue. The, the one thing that I saw here, and I don't know how well you'll be able to see it, but I didn't realize this, but it, it has this weird spot where it looks like it had pitting and then like the pitting got um, polished. Uh, so I don't know if that was something where the, this blade sat around a little bit after they, they ground it and then, you know, it got some pitting and they polished that off in the finishing process or what, but it's not something I've seen before, even on other knives in T10 steel from, from Rough Rider. Uh, so it was, it was weird. I actually called Smoky Mountain Knife Works about it yesterday and got great service, which I always have on the phone. Uh, and they actually, I believe, are sending another one. Um, so, you know, Rough Rider normally has really great warranty service. So I really appreciate that. Um, it's a weird issue. I, I, something where it's not a huge deal, but it's strange to have pitting on a brand new knife, especially it has oil on the blade. I, I really don't completely understand it. Maybe, like I said, uh, after grinding the blade and before finishing, you know, or polishing it, they uh, it, it sat around and got some of that. Um, and then the last thing I got on the first day, I did get one of these. And again, I think the reason why um, these two knives have some issues is because I didn't really look at them closely because I was dealing with that person who had, um, you know, been not super helpful and, and not super, uh, even I would say professional, but um, <clears throat> I didn't look at these knives closely uh, where I would have probably seen these things, but I got the Rough Rider Reserve Triple R. And again, I believe this is the 008, yeah, 008. Um, so this is the common stock. It is a large um, stockman with a classic clip point and then a um, sheep foot. And then instead of the spade blade, and actually the the, spit, um, the sheep foot's on the opposite end than it normally is. It's normally the sheep foot would be on this end, but it has a bottle opener screwdriver. Um, <clears throat> and I'm going to be doing a full review on this. So, you know, keep an eye out for that. Uh, definitely subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. But um, the tip I realized after getting it home, and I'm sure you won't be able to see this, uh, but the tip is blunted. I don't know if you can see that at all, but it, it looks like it actually got maybe ground down in the process of this being polished. Um, and then the other thing here is, and I can't really tell, I don't have a loop to look at it under magnification, but I think that there's a crack in the micarta. Oh, you can actually see that. Pretty sure you can see that there, at least a little bit. And sorry, I'm using my front camera here. So, um, but a crack at this pin right here. And I've been looking and I actually think that there might be a crack at the top pin on the pile side also. So uh, yeah, a little bit of a bummer. The, the one, um, the one, Back spring's a little high. I don't care about that really. But uh, on a $60 knife, uh, weird to have the tip rounded like that. It's something that people complain about on case knives. Um, and the, the crack's not a huge deal. I don't think it really matters too much. But that's something where I, I did mention it when I called yesterday, uh, but decided not to send it in. Um, first of all, because I, it's kind of like, I think, more legitimate to review this one. Um, and then also because you know, yeah, it's $60 and that's not anywhere near as inexpensive as the other Rough Riders. It's still like, you know, it's going to cost me $10 to send it in. And, you know, hopefully the other one will have the same issues. So I don't, I don't think I'm going to send it in for that, but I'm interested to see what you think, if you think these are issues worth worrying about. But that's what I got on the first day there. The second day, um, I got a couple other things. First of all, like I say, I got the hat. Um, and then I got 
another Rough Rider here. Uh, this is one I've been meaning to get for a long time from the site and I uh, was happy to check them out to see if they were well made because the older Rough Riders, I think the newer Rough Riders tend to be even a little bit better made. But um, this is the Select Barrel, what number is this? 14, RR1464. Um, so this has a nice little sheet foot blade, kind of a wide sheet foot. Um, then it has, where's the nail neck? It has a bottle opener and can opener. I really like that it has the can opener. No, not everybody uses can openers, but I do. And then it has a um, uh, corkscrew. Corkscrew is a little tougher to get out than typical, but, um, you know, probably a good thing that it's uh, solidly in there. Uh, so I'm interested, I'm going to use this one. I'm interested to see um, how the corkscrew does. I have another Rough Rider knife with a corkscrew that using the corkscrew made it basically fall apart. Uh, so yeah, interested to see how this one does. Um, but a cool little knife, kind of a novelty, but useful also. Uh, so also on the second day, I got this knife. So this is another one I've wanted for a long time, wanted to get one on sale. Uh, they were on sale for like $10, I think, on Cold Steel's website, but they were seconds. This is not a second. Um, so this is the Cold Steel Bushman. This is the Bowie version. Uh, you can see it comes with kind of a nice sheath, kind of reminiscent of Mora sheaths. Uh, it has this like hook, hook clip and it is um, held in by, by um, little thingies in there. I'll do a full review on this also, but it comes with a uh, fire starting rod, whatever you call those. And it is an integral folded handle knife. So, you know, you can make it a spear if you want to, but also it's just a cool knife for 17 bucks, I think. Um, I've actually, I cut some cardboard with this yesterday and was impressed with how well it cut. I didn't think it would cut very well, but uh, it did. So i um, planning to keep this one in my car, I think, and, uh, you know, just use it and have fun with it. Uh, so yeah, that's what I got. Um, I'm glad that I went, even though the experience on that first day wasn't what I was expecting. Um, I am glad that I went because I think I would have regretted it otherwise. I don't know when I'll be back down there. It's a pretty solid drive from, uh, from where I live. And uh, it was a cool experience. I just wish that it, you know, it hadn't also had that negative aspect to it. So um, I, I just, I guess I'll be thankful that I've always had good experiences with the customer service from calling in and messaging. And um, if I do get a message back about the experience, uh, I'll try to update the description or something. But I know this is a long video. Uh, you probably are tired of uh, looking at me and not seeing too many knives, but um, it's, uh, it's one that I wanted to make just to kind of share my experience with, uh, my first visit to Smoky Mountain Knife Works, the showroom in Sevierville. I think that's how you say that, Tennessee. Uh, so if you've enjoyed this video, I've got lots of other videos on knives, focused on knives. Uh, so you can subscribe, you can hit the bell for notifications. So you post, when, so you know, when I post new videos, uh, including when I post videos on the knives shown in this video. And uh, also check out my social media, Instagram and Facebook at Knife Thoughts and my website, knifethoughts.com, where I post articles on knives and knife related topics. And last but not least, as always, don't forget to go out and do good.